Good morning, everybody. Appreciate you taking the Wednesday to come into National Signing Day. Um, I said a while ago that we probably should change uh, the names of these signing dates, but the NCAA um, hasn't figured that out yet. The signing day was in December, and this is the late signing. They call it the signing day and the early signing. It's really that's the signing day. This is the late signing day, uh, in my opinion, and, and uh, for good reason. Obviously, we're here for that. Um, and, um, you know, probably, hopefully for the future, we'll never sign anybody on this date. We'd like to be done in, uh, in December, get all our guys signed up at that point, and then really get into January. And, uh, you know, this year, you know, the head coach gets two weeks to be on the road. I mean, it's kind of tight. So as a whole, we had three weeks on the road um, with the head coach. I had one week to try to clean stuff up. Uh, in December after the, ch after the championship game. We lost a week because of the championship game. So anybody that didn't play in the championship got four weeks. We got three weeks. Uh, so we, you know, that's a, 10 people, seven schools a day, uh, really 11 people, you know, seven schools a day. That's a, that's a lot of schools that you miss out on. So uh, we, we grinded it out in January, got some good work done. But again, signing day today, really, you know, nothing new from what um, we talked about in the, you know, uh, I guess in December on that, the first, the signing day, we'll call it, um, except we have three, you know, transfers uh, that we're able to bring in, three really, really good ones that I'm excited about that we did a lot of homework on. Again, we're not, you know, you guys know from the future, you know, or from the past, we've not taken a ton of guys out of the portal. We're going to have to know something, you know, in detail about this guy and do our homework and, and obviously have a need uh, at any position we bring in. So. Uh, I think, you know, the details are there, but I'll, I'll go ahead and start with that. Um, just the three guys that we brought in, obviously Keaton Slovis, you know, threw for 7,576 yards at the University of Southern Cal, 58 TDs, completed 68% of his passes. Um, again, was a, a guy that, uh, you know, me and Graham, I'll get, I'll get Graham again, um, a lot of credit here. It was just him and me recruiting this guy. Um, Carlo held the camera one day. Carlo, there's your, your props right in here. We did a little, you know, Zoom. It was a Zoom Zoom recruiting deal. Um, we were back to the old COVID, so we knew how to set it up and get it done. But uh, that was something that was kind of my guy, you know, as far as just you know recruiting him and kind of keeping it tight and you know just you know just knowing the trust that we have. We you know we just kept it away from the other coaches, let them deal with with the bowl game, and it was you know almost a week and a half focused on just him. Uh, as far as, you know, we thought he was a spectacular player um, in high school. Um, again, a lot of people think, a lot of people think that uh, his girlfriend, who's a soccer player uh, here at Pitt, which I think you guys knew all that, heard all that, um, like that had a lot to do with it. And uh, it really didn't. And I, you'll get a chance to talk to him today. Matter of fact, in all my conversations, we really didn't even talk about that, which is kind of amazing. Um, but it wasn't really like, hey, you got to be here with her, like, you know. Uh, that wasn't the deal, um, but it was really just a fit for him. I think you'll 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 get that feel from him. I'll let him talk more about that than, you know, the, the whys. But you know, I just think the culture, you know, the, the program, um, the the returnees that we had at Pitt. That's kind of what we sold on our end. And I did have a nice tie-in, which is crazy. Small world, you know, relationships wherever you are, you know, uh, end up getting you. But a uh, really really good friend. Obviously, there's two brothers. You know, Todd and Shannon. Todd, we won't mention Todd, but this guy Shannon Shia up in Michigan, I got to give him a little props, but, you know, heard we recruited him and, you know, shot me a text, said, hey, you're, rec you know, recruiting him. And I was like, yeah. And it so happens, you know, Shannon grew up with his dad, you know, since they were five years old. So it was kind of a nice little, you know, to at least know, hey, there's a trust, you know, he could, you know, talk to the dad and kind of say, hey, who we were as people. Um, so, you know, those friends, are always going to help you. So uh, we're happy to have Keaton here. He's here throwing, running around, and and uh, and having a good time. I hope um, the next one, um, Nate Mumfield, um, again had 63 receptions for almost 800 yards, eight TDs. Is a true freshman um, over at uh, Akron, and uh, freshman All-American, uh, good player. Again, one of our old recruiting guys, Alex Klein, was there. Actually, coached the receivers last year, so we knew who he was. You know, you know, on the field, off the field, in the classroom, everything about him. Obviously, Tom Arthur was the head coach at the time, and we got a lot of details about you know who he was as well. So, um, you know, I appreciate those guys and, and the help they did uh, getting him here, um, but beat a lot of people on both of those kids there. Uh, but just an excellent receiver. I think he come in here and 
and, and just add to add to that room, uh, that receiver room, and and get us off uh, to a to a great start there this spring. Uh, and then uh, Shane Simon, um, a linebacker from St. Peter's Prep High School in New Jersey, went to Notre Dame. We recruited him out of high school, so there was a relationship there. You know, got a you know long relationship with old Coach Hanson, the head coach at St. Peter's, and his, his son is the. Uh, is the head coach there now and actually saw both of them before this even popped up, uh, I think, or it was after the whole thing was over. Um, but, uh, you know, had obviously a need for the linebacker position and, and, um, and uh, again, found, I think, a perfect fit. Um, I kind of, this kid kind of reminds me a little bit of Kylan Johnson, who you guys remember transferred from Florida, just what he did, you know, did at Notre Dame and what Kylan did at Florida and how maybe he can, you know, help this program next year. I think uh, I think he's just, you know, he's a he's a specimen. He's big. He's strong. You know, everything we talked to. I talked to Clark Lee, his old defense coordinator, who's at Vanderbilt now as a head coach. Um, you know, just about him as a player, and um, think we got a really really good player there. So those are the three mid year guys. We got a total of ten here now. Um, so that are that you know weren't here last fall. I think that's. You know, four more than you thought. These three mid years, and there was another one that came in um, that uh, we didn't expect to come in. He actually was coming in. I may have even mentioned that on signing day. Marquan Pope from Denton, Texas, is here now. He came about a week late, um, and uh, we didn't think we were going to get him in here, but uh, we luckily did. So it gives us another, you know, outside linebacker for spring ball, which was huge to get that, you know, to get him in that room. And get him the knowledge, you know, get him practicing, get him to find out how we do it here. Uh, I think it's a great advantage, not only for him, but, but for our defense, Coach Bates and Coach Manilak. So that's a little bit of recruiting. And then I'll just mention, um, you know, Coach Signetti, Frank Signetti Jr., I guess, um, as our new offensive coordinator. It seems like it gets out a week before any other news can officially come out from the university. Um, but, um, you know, Coach Signetti's been awesome while I was here. And, uh, you know, it's a guy that, uh, you know, he didn't reach out to us saying, hey, I want the pit job, which is interesting. I think, you know, a new way of, of college coaching now is, you know, it's like you got to go find a guy. Kind of like I found Coach Stacchiotti a few years ago. You're kind of looking for the right fit and uh, talk to, you know, shoot 15 guys, um, you know, just kind of digging it up and, and uh, found a great, a great, great fit. A Pittsburgh guy that's passionate about this city. Uh, that has a you know a wealth of background you know in all kinds of offenses. So we'll develop a new offense here, uh, different than what they did at BC. So we'll have our own little you know our own wrinkles here. With you know it all, it all starts with the players. I think you know as far as the style of offense you're going to do, what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, depends on who you have in that room. So uh, it'll be a little bit different look than you know what we were you know uh, what we saw at BC. Maybe what we were last year, kind of a combination of maybe a little bit of both. Uh, we'll see. It's a, it's a work in progress. It's, the offense coaches are, are working on that now. Um, but we're happy to have him here now. Um, probably have some later news for you next week, maybe maybe another one of these Wednesday deals. Uh, we also do have a new GA on campus as well, Jonathan DiBiaso, who um, worked with Coach Signetti at Boston College, um, was down at Vanderbilt. So we're, we were fortunate enough to get him uh, here as well. Kind of a you know, GA assistant quarterback coach. Uh, he's going to work, you know, work a lot with the quarterbacks, really good. And again, the son of a former head football coach, I should say, of the head coach at Catholic Memorial up in Boston, uh, John DiBiaso. So um, he's, he's a coach's kid, which, you know, it's always good to have those in here, football guys. So um, with that, I'll open it up for questions. What priority was to get another quarterback to, to push for the starting job this year? It was, it was a major factor. I mean, our plan all along was to get one. Okay, so it wasn't like after the season we said, hey, let's get one. That was our plan back, um, you know, back at this time, back last February. Like, we're not going to take a high school quarterback. Uh, there was nobody that in the 22 class that we were like, we want that guy. I just didn't think like it was a, you know, a great year quarterback wise. So um, that was our plan all along is to, to get a guy at that certain time. And, and uh, again, we were, we were full steam ahead on three guys. And uh, unfortunately, you know, and fortunately, we got the one we wanted. We got our number one guy. But we actually had two other guys that had tried to commit prior to. And I had to say, slow down. We're waiting, and which, is, which is a hard thing as a coach. Because you're like, you know, you want to wait on that guy. That guy wants to come, but you, that's your number one guy. And uh, there was, you know, that, was a, that was a rough week, just kind of holding off and, and trying to make sure we got the guy that was the, the guy we wanted, the number one guy. So that was, that was big. 
their quarterback sick and they're getting uh, from the work? Great. I mean, I think, you know, the one thing about this program and, um, you know, again, and I don't know how, I don't know why. Uh, I was just talking to someone a little bit earlier about, you know, like, you know, do we recruit character or do we develop it? I don't know. Like, I just love our kids. I love this program. I love, you know, I love our players. And, you know, it's like, you don't know if we're just recruiting great kids or, again, or it's something they get developed here or it's something we're doing in the program. I'm not sure what it is. I wish I knew for sure. Uh, you know, I got to think we develop it because there's no way we can, you know, be that on as far as the people we bring in this program. But our kids bring up, you know, bring in everybody into, the, into, into, their, uh, into their family. Uh, the quarterbacks have been great. I mean, it's called competition, and everybody wants competition in that room. And, um, you know, I think that's – and, again, it's every position. But our kids are always going to have open arms uh, for, for new guys in the program, whether it be freshmen, um, you know, or not. Um, you know, our punter um, is here as well. And it's, you know, really when you talk about that, like he had, you know, he's from Australia. And, and Sam was talking yesterday in my office just about how welcoming everybody is here to him. And he goes, he's talked to some other Australian punters that have come to America and have not been welcomed. He's like, coach, it's been awesome. Because I've talked to other guys at, at other schools in America that aren't welcomed as much. And, I, you know, it's just as a head coach, that's what you want to hear. So that was just yesterday a conversation with Sam, which you guys can have that conversation uh, with him um, when you guys get to that point, maybe next week or the week after. With the, uh, two, with, with the signing days, would you be in favor of dropping one of these two, maybe the December one, and adding one like in the summer, like a July or August signing day? No, no, Chris, there's been a lot of talk about the signing days, um, you know, with the, at least in the ACC, because we actually have great communication with our commissioner. I can't tell you how happy I am with Jim Phillips and I guess just yesterday, his, you know, his, his uh, year in office there, um, his ratings are really high uh, as far as, I think, with the ACC coaches and, and everybody, ADs, you know, chancellors, presidents, whatever it may be. But um, the signing date in, in, in December is the date. That is the signing date. Um, again, like I said earlier, they, you know, they need to, um, you know, change the name of it and say that is the signing date and whatever you do after that. But I don't see it moving any further and I don't see, you know, there's talk you know, through the NCAA at the AFCA convention of backing it up and just going back to this being the date. Don't think that'll ever happen. You know, we've vote, voted as, as ACC coaches of keeping it like it is right now, but I don't think there's any way in heck it's going to move the other way. Um, I think that's a, you know, we, we talked about, um, you know, six years ago, five years ago, when we moved the signing date about how it was going to, you know, cause all kinds of problems. It has, but you know, the coaches are used to it now. We like it the way it is. We're getting used to the calendar. There's nothing worse for a coach to mess up our calendar. Um, you know, moving that signing date up made June like the worst month for a, for a college football coach. Okay, June is the worst month for a college football coach as far as everything going on. You got your own camps. You got you got visiting camps. You got official visitors every weekend. I mean, we just can't. We used to have a youth camp. You know, and again, um, we'd love to have a youth camp and bring in the young kids. But it's like we can't even have a youth camp anymore because we have. You know, it just changed our whole calendar. So moving that thing to the summer, whether it be September or August or something like that, I don't see it happening. It'll just, you know, cause more confusion for, for coaches, and I don't think anybody's really for it. And, again, I think it will kill college football or high school football. I think, you know, when you talk to high school coaches about it, um, you know, we saw at least one quarterback last year just, you know, forego his senior year in high school, right? You move that thing up. Why would a kid go play a senior year? I mean, they're just going to say, I'm not playing. And, you know, right now we have mid-year kids spending three and a half years in, in high school and then coming in January, which is great. What you're going to find out if that happens, that they're going to be graduating in three years. And I don't think there's a high school in the country that really wants to get into that. But it'll start happening. Chris, we know better than me, but this might be your smallest class, your big smallest class in 20 years. Are you comfortable with the size of the class? You have to be, right? Okay. You know, we had our first really team run yesterday morning, Jerry. And what's a small? What, what does a small class mean? That's why I asked the question. What does a small class mean? When I walk out on that field yesterday, I'm like, holy cow! Like our football team that just won a championship is out there. Like when you look around, you're like, everybody's back. Um, next week, next year's class is going to be big. So not a lot of those rankings. You guys love to look at those rankings. Are based on, you know, the more kids you sign, doesn't matter the quality of them, um, the better your class is. So. The great thing is we're going to have a bunch of young guys, right? Or excuse me, a, a, just a handful of young guys, which tells you 
there's a good football team in that indoor yesterday morning. And when you look around, it's like, there's not much missing. And again, that's why Slovis comes. That's why, you know, Shane comes. That's why Mumfield comes because they want to be a part of, a part of that. Yeah, you know, the, the NCAA doesn't give us unlimited scholarships. We're, we're limited to 85, and if you have only so many seniors leave, you know, everybody gets fired up when, you know, the Hogs sat in and said we're coming back for another year, right? Well, that changes your numbers. When they all come back, then it's like, okay, you know, we, don't, we don't have those scholarships anymore. And, you know, you plan for what you plan. Um, like, uh, for great example, um, this is, you know, I uh, could show you a text message, but Shockey, Jacques Louise, you know, we all love Shockey, right? But Shockey all along was going to be a senior. He walked on senior day. And, you know, back in, back last year, last February, last March, Shockey said he was moving on. So what do we do? We say, okay, there's a scholarship we're going to recruit with. And all of a sudden, us in Akron change, you know, change players. But the day after the signing date, Shockey texts me and says, Coach, I'm thinking about coming back. And I'm like, like, you know, we don't, have, we, don't, we don't have any scholarships left. You know, that's what you get into. There's, so there's a scholarship crunch. This COVID, this, the NCAA giving everybody a COVID year has messed a lot of things up. I mean, that's a, you know, you don't plan. I mean, we, we try to plan as, as, I mean, we're as detailed in planning for scholarship numbers as what we got, but you can't give out more scholarships than you, than you have. And sometimes you maybe oversight a couple knowing that you might lose a couple. And um, we certainly do that. We don't go overboard. Um, but good question, Jerry. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. We had to follow up Chris's question uh, about signing day. I know you, you like it the way it is now, but ideally for you, what would be better? I, I know we're two days, but would it be better in December or back to February? Like, what's the ideal situation? For the you? ideal is right where it is, OK? Um, you know, for so many reasons. You know, if you move it back to the old February, today's signing day, um, you know, you're babysitting these guys through so much time that you don't have, you can't even contact them. So they'd have to, you know, so one of the reasons the ACC and, the, and again, Commissioner Phillips has, you know, um, we've kind of, you know, everybody in the ACC, every coach in the ACC, the commissioner wants to have a 12-team playoff, right? We would have been in it. It would have been nice to be in the playoffs, right? Um, but some of these things need to be answered. We need to have a, you know, I think the commissioner says 365. They look at the calendar. And uh, you know he's been he's been vocal. Our coaches have been vocal on our Zoom calls in the ACC, and I'm sure we'll be live and in person this year uh, at our ACC head coaches meetings. But as far as hey, what you know, where are we going with name, image, and likeness, and all the different things that are going on? The calendar, the you know the 12 you know 12 team playoff, the you know the amount of games. I mean, you know Kenny was beat up after 14 games. You know I was talking to other high school players like, how'd your body feel after you know because we were talking about you know the playoffs. How's your body feel after, you know, 12 high school games? Oh, coach, I'm sore. I'm beat up. I mean, we're going to now play 17 possibly, you know. Um, but there's all kinds of, you know, things that we're talking about as coaches that we need to get done to get to the 12-team playoff. For example, Jerry, we, it, we'd have more than 12 if they'd give us 95 scholarships, right? Wouldn't that be good? Would that be good for high school football? We need it right now. But, like, give us, if you want to go 12-team playoff, don't we, don't we deserve, you know, 95 scholarships? Well, let's do it. So there's things like that that we'd like to get done. Hope so. That'd be, that'd be good. But if you're going to play longer seasons, you got to be able to have more players. You know, you have to. How is the excitement level for you guys, not only to kind of be the opening game on that Thursday night, but to have the return of basketball as well? It's exciting. I mean, our kids are cranked up right now. I mean, I think the energy's uh, good right now. They know, you know, we're not opening up with, you know, you know, an easier opponent. This is going to be a big-time game at Himes Field, um, and uh, it's, uh, it's 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 exciting. It's something to get you know we're preparing now. It starts now. You know, it's just uh, you know a lot of things. You know, first first of all, when he comes in here, I don't know how many people know. You know, it starts with his energy and knowledge. You know, um, and again. In these coaching hires, John, you know, sometimes you make mistakes as head coach. It's not easy. It's like picking players. You know, sometimes they're really good. Sometimes they're better than you thought. Sometimes they're not so good. And uh, that's the hardest job as a, as a coach is, you know, the first thing you're looking for is good people. And uh, if you don't have good people, you got problems, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, we've made this is, this is, we've improved, okay, this building. We've improved this staff. Uh, with Coach Signetti hiring. So it's great people, family guy, back home. I mean, all those things are important. 
um, his passion and love for the game. I mean, just talking football with him, it's like a, it's like football 505. Okay, I don't even know. Is there, Celeste, is there 500 level classes here? Maybe grad school? It's like, it's a, it's a higher level, and, you know, and you learn and learn, and there's, you know, different ways to do things. Um, but just his football knowledge, it was, it was, you know, I guess that's what it comes down to. And first of all, being a good person. How similar do you see his offensive Again, if you look at his track record of where he'd been, John, I mean, to me, it's like, you know, you don't just call plays and run formations regardless of what your pe – it all comes down to people. It comes down to personnel, you know, who you want to put on the field. I think the first job of an offense coordinator or a defense coordinator, if we only have three really good D linemen, then we're going to be a three down, four linebacker. We're going to be a three, four. And if you have really good receivers, then let's put, let's put them all on the field. So, you know, could we be four receivers? Could we be three receivers? He's coached at a high level. Whether it was with Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay, you know, with the Giants, it, you know, it doesn't matter. But it, like, he can do anything. I mean, it's um, except tr the triple option. We're not going to run Georgia Tech's option. I can promise you that. Um, but I mean, he can do anything. So it's really who are your people, and what do we do? When you're recruiting kind of slugs, do you have an idea if any would, would be here, or are you working? No, no. How, how did that work? Yeah, I mean, you know, probably as eager as Kenny Pickett was when we recruited him. I mean, Kenny Pickett was another, you know, guy that we recruited without an offensive coordinator or quarterback coach. And, you know, to me, there was that faith um, that he had and trust that we were going to get the right guy. Um, and, you know, I kind of kept him and really Nick Patty in the, in the loop as far as what was going on with that hire. Um, you know, they had talked with him as well. So, um, you know, that was probably, if you ask Keaton, one of the biggest questions he had. You know, as far as like, you know, should I'm gonna come to Pitt? We don't have, a, I don't even know what kind of offense we're gonna run. Um, but, you know, I think that's trust in hey, how we're gonna do it. And, and you know, Keaton was with, you know, Kenny um, in the Manning camp. And um, so I think they had talked. And, you know, because Kenny called me and says, yeah, you know, he says, he, Coach, I don't think he believes that he's gonna have, you know, a chance to talk to the coordinator before he walks on campus. And, uh, so I called Keaton out on that, and it's like, like he, he almost thought it was like, like there's no way. Um, but that's that's kind of how you got to do things. Those those guys have to work, you know, work together. Those, those quarterbacks, so they're in that room every single day. So it's important. Great, great. He's throwing it around right now, so he's. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, won't be getting hit, but we won't do that. You know, we'll see. I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen him do much except on videotape, and I hate to make any decisions off videotape except he's athletic, he can make plays, he's got great ball skills, and that's the number one thing you want is a guy can catch the ball and run. Um, so we'll, you know, it's gonna, we'll find out in spring ball. It's just like the offense. I mean, you know, we got to do, you know, we got to get them all in the field, you know. Um, there's more. I mean, look at, you know, Jane Bradley's, a, I mean, he keeps getting taller. It looks like he's 6'4". I mean, so there's all kinds of guys in that room that this is going to be a fun spring. And uh, spring ball starts on February 28th, and so it's right around the corner as well. What uh, priority is it to recruit to Whitfield and, and getting a guy like Fitzsimmons? How much does it help keeping some of the better kids here at home? Yeah, I mean, the Whitfield's obviously real important, and we, we want to get the best out of here. Um, just like we want to for this 23 class. So it's important, you know, we're not just going to say, hey, we're taking whoever we, um, whoever we have to, we're going to take the best. And we're going to take, you know, the, the guys that we need to to win a championship. And, and uh, that's the way it's got to be. So it's, it's huge. I mean, you know, the year before, we, you, know, you know, during the, the, the COVID class, we were able to land, you know, Nakai and Dory and all those guys. That was a great class here in Pittsburgh. Every year is a little bit different as far as the numbers go, but, you know, it's important to keep those guys at home. Talk about the importance of Frank, you know, working with what you got. How much have you guys talked about reinforcing the run game? You guys do a lot more last year. You guys have three talented running backs that you've always talked about. How much has that been a focus of what you guys are trying to do moving forward? It was a big focus. Um, you know, I think, you know, um, it was a big focus. I mean, you know, you look at Izzy and Vince and and uh, and Rodney. Those guys all deserve to have carries. Um, we didn't really do a great job of getting the ball. Uh, I like to run the ball. I'm not going to tell an offense coordinator what to do, how to do it, when to run it. Uh, I say my piece, and then you, you better win. You better score points, and that's kind of the way the whole game goes. Um, but I, you know, one of the things about Coach Signetti is I know he likes to run the football. So we're going to try to establish a run game, which is just going to, to me, open up some more explosives uh, for those wideouts.
Yeah. Wait a couple more, and we're going to get to Frank. Chris, you go ahead. John, you got one too. Yeah, with the way like the transfer portal is developed, and the way name image likeness seems to, it seems like there's some overlap between those two. How much did you find yourself this offseason, and do you expect going forward you have to recruit your own guys to keep them on your roster? You yeah. Um, you know, there's a thing called tampering, and you're not supposed to tamper. Um, and there's a lot of tampering going on. I don't know how the NCAA or the FBI, whatever it may be, checking people's phones for the tampering that's going on. But it's not good. Uh, it's not good for the game of college football. And again, that's just another reason to put a, you know, put a, the brakes on, you know, ex expanding the 12 teams in the playoffs. But it's not good. And you know, you spend time. I mean, I can't tell you or don't really care to tell you how much time, but um, you know, you're spending time doing that, and that's not the way it should be. That's bad. That's bad. Or that. I think so. I think, you know, I think when you win and you got good players and you got guys in senior bowl, which I'll be down there tomorrow with, with our crew down there, and you're developing guys that, you know, people would like to just steal your developed guys and, and not have to develop them themselves. Develop them yourselves. It was big. You know, we needed, we needed, you know, you know, we needed that one. We, we had one prior to, and, and uh, things didn't work out for him, unfortunately. Um, but it was, it was good. We needed, you know, we needed that one in a, in, a, in a bad way. And, but we didn't need it just to do it. You know, wasn't taking a guy to fill a spot. Because, uh, you know, we're going to be picky. And so that's why we were really picky. And so not only did we get the spot filled, you know, uh, we got it with the right guy, too. Were you surprised that they came right on the train? No. So, Ed, one more, you, you mentioned something that reminded me. Um, you've had, I think, since you got here, maybe four guys get medically disqualified and enrolled and then found something that had to go, going way back to yeah. 16 or so. so Zach Gilbert and George Hill. George Hill, yeah, and then and, um, the running back last year came up to the break. Uh, and some of those guys have gone on and played at other places. Do you feel like there are just higher standards here or doctors more diligent? What do you think? Well, I think the doctors are more diligent. You know, you know. Let's go back to whatever that was. My second class was that 2016 with uh, with those two young men. Um, but uh, you know, safety is the most important thing, and we're not going to put kids on the field that. Um, so to me, I applaud UPMC and our doctors and trainers, and you know, we just got to be safe, and we're not going to put somebody on the field that uh, that could have a bad day, and that's not good. So um, again. Some people care, some people don't. Um, you know, we're, we're, we care. And, you know, people ask, hey, can you sign a waiver? Can you do this? Can you do that? It's like, you know, some people sign waivers to go ahead and let them do it. But, you know, if you have a bad day, I don't know if that piece of paper with a signature on it's going to really mean anything. Jared, this is the last one. I love you. That's why I'm giving it to you. I'm sorry. Do uh, you want to explain? Do you want to explain your answer to my question? Which one? My, right. No. You ruined it. I think you wanted to. <laughs> so one more question. One more question. Because he has to. That's like an injury question. I guess with the, the linebackers, there's a lot of turnover there with some of those transfers. And what are you kind of expecting from that group and maybe some young guys that really haven't played yet? You know, it's, it's an opportunity. I mean, to me, it's, that's what you want as a young guy. I think sometimes guys that are behind don't develop like you want them to because they're looking going, you know, Phil Campbell's a great player, you know, like. I'm never going to play. But now the opportunity is there. So uh, Bengali, we're looking forward to great things there. Consistency, you know. Uh, we've seen spurts. You watch them in the bowl game come through there and did it exactly the way they're supposed to on, a, on an outside zone to him into the boundary. Um, I wish he'd finish the play and get the TFL. He let somebody else get the five-yard TFL. But he made the, he caused the TFL. So, you know, it's those opportunities for those, these guys to step up and, um, and show who they are. So there's, there's guys there. Trust me. Uh, there's guys there. We're going we're gonna to find out.